Hey guys, welcome to Musty Rose Podcast, episode number 243. Guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. And uh, while I'm doing this, I have a, uh, a bulldog staring me in the face right now because I think he wants to talk. River, do you have anything to say? Well, that was very interesting. All he did was just sniff the microphone, so uh, not yet. I'm sure he'll be barking here in a little bit. But, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys every week. This week's episode is brought to you by Thorn Brothers. Go to thornbros.com. Guys, I've switched pretty much all my rods over to the Thorn Brothers brand, and I'm telling you, it's one of the best things I ever did. They've got their new Stealth series of rods. Um, I'm throwing, I've got three links uh, and actions. I've got an eight foot uh, extra heavy that I throw like glide baits and walk the dog topwaters with. I've got a nine foot extra heavy, which is just a great all around rod. That rod right there will throw anything from a, um, you know, let's say a pounder sized bulldog uh, all the way down to your bucktails. It's just a great all around rod. And then now I have two as I have their 10 foot heavy heavy action uh stealth rod and that's a really nice rod it's a perfect rod for like bucktail fishing not super big bucktails but um um, kind of your medium junior cowgirl and down type bucktails uh and for like little uh for like twitch bait stuff like that so and then i always use the xl predators i i love the xl predator that they make so Guys, check them out. Go to thornbros.com. They've also got tons of baits. Guys, why, why go anywhere else? Go to the website. Order some stuff. The dog just farted. Oh, Brody. Do you like Thorn Brothers? Let me know if you like Thorn Brothers. Don't move if you like Thorn Brothers. Oh, my God. He loves them. Uh, it's a... Uh, Great place, thornbros.com. Make sure you check that out. And also send us a text uh, on our text line. You can, you can, uh, we'll use the old number this time. We'll use the Tony Grant special um, Lunge and Lures text line, which is 606 776 6570. 606 776 6570. Lunge and Lures, lungeandlures.com. Check them out for all your crankbait, hard bait needs. Also, with the spinner baits, they've got the Nutbuster spinner baits, DC9, DC10. Check them out online. Folks, on the phone today, I've got Ryan McMahon from up in Minnesota. Ryan, what's happening? Oh, now, Mark, Greg, just, uh, you know. Getting ready to head up your way here this weekend. Oh, coming up. How long are you going to be up? Uh, so we're going to be, uh, I think we'll get a little fishing in Saturday and uh, I think leaving Thursday morning. So that gives us, uh, yeah, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday um, of solid fishing on Lake of the Woods. <laughs> well, that'll be nice. Uh, I think so. Yeah, it'll be good. It looks like the weather, you guys are going to hit pretty good weather. It's been kind of cold up here this spring and... It's, uh, well, spring, last couple of weeks of the summer here. Um, <laughs> uh, highs, uh, highs in the, you know, the, the sixties, even not even hitting sixty some and water temperature actually fell from when I got here. We're already down. We we're kind of down, uh, in the mornings to about 67, 68. Um, but I think with this warmer weather, we're going to warm up some and it's going to, I think it's really going to get the fish going. I sure hope so. I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm looking at. I mean, I've you know been fishing around Minnesota a little bit, and um, you know sitting here at my house in the Twin Cities, and and it's you know it's cooler, drier right now, and it's it's been relatively speaking, it's been cooler here. But I know you drive up north just a, a little bit in Minnesota too, and they've had you know considerably cooler weather, and and the water temps are, are you know about as as cool as you're going to see them for this time of year. So. Um, yeah, hopefully a little warm up and some steady weather up there, uh, you know, really get that bucktail bite going. That's how I like to catch them up there. So, yeah, well, Uh, let me, let me tell you something, Ryan. Have you ever, uh, hit an island? (laughs) Uh, like with my boat? Yes. With the big motor going? Yes. With the big motor going fast? No. Okay. Um, no, I really only bounce the trolling motor off of, off of hidden rocks protruding from islands well i did i did something yesterday for the first time and actually doug wigner seen it and he thought it was very funny 
Um, <laughs> I uh, I was I le- do you ever you ever uh, have you ever heard the uh, the expression "Don't text and drive"? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've seen that. Yeah, it's important on the highways and the byways, and <laughs> if you're on a horse and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did it while I was uh, maneuvering a boat. And so I'm texting, and we're like going to a different spot, but I'm going slow at an idle, and I'm really into it. I'm writing this great text, and all of a sudden, I hear what could only be described as as a uh, a car wreck. And um, it was a single vehicle, me. And uh, all of a sudden, the boat is literally like it's getting ready to launch into space. <laughs> I, I mean, I've got the front of the boat probably four feet up onto an island. And is this your tiller? Yep. 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 Oh, well, you're so far back, you can't really see what's up in front exactly. of you. Exactly. Right? There is all kinds of distractions. There was a bird. It was, uh, it was, you were proofreading this great text. Before I you was, it was, a, yeah, it was, uh, uh, yeah. And it, it basically the text that you up, um, that was, uh, it, it, it was, it was, um, it was, it was bad, but nothing got hurt. No more than any, no more than usual of my stuff. Just uh, uh, just scuffed up the bottom. No no damage to the fiberglass. Or no damage at all. No, I got a keel guard. There's a reason you have keel guards on your boat, people. Oh, that's a must. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a keel guard and you hit an island, you're going to have problems. But somebody <laughs> put this two acre island in front of me, and I was not appreciative of them. Um, you would have thought at least it would have had a flashing light on it or something, or or a bird <laughs> yelling at me. Um, <laughs> But yeah, don't hit an island when you come to Lake of the Woods. It's not it's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to try to avoid that. I'm try my no. best. Bring yeah, a spare prop too if you can. I've I've yeah. I've really been finding uh uh some nice rocks this year. Uh I so I heard the water is like about a foot low, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's probably a foot low. Um there are some rocks that I found that are you know they're right at that prop skag uh, yeah, height, yeah. and uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's pretty. I, I've been eating while I've been on plane, but uh, you know I have a I pretty much made myself a rule: you never drive into a bay fast. Right, you right. Always idle. Give Any, her the long approach. Give her the long approach. What's in your? What? what why are you in a hurry for? That's what I always <laughs> right. say. What What are you in a hurry? Look, you know, shut down. Look at nature. That's uh, mm-hmm. that's my motto. And I also learned that if on the map, if you have a uh, a Lake Master map like I got, um, if it says it's uh, eight feet deep, do not go over top of it mm-hmm. uh, because that you will probably hit it. Um, I you know what what version of Lake Master chip do you have? Do you know offhand? Uh, it's the one that was last year, the nine, I think. Okay. I should, yeah, I, mine's pretty dated. I almost, I don't know how much those improve over the years. I imagine they do a bit, but, um, yeah, I, well, I'm going to be treading pretty lightly out there because it's been since 2019 pre COVID since I've been, been up to, to woods. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm like, I, I had the paper map stretched out on the table last night. I'm kind of, you know, going over some stuff, trying to jog the memory of, uh, you know, where we catch fish or where they might be, where some dangerous rocks might be. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm going to be, you're not going to see me, um, flying around too fast out there or taking any chances. So, well, I, uh, yeah, no, there's some, yeah, it is about a foot down. So if guys are coming up here, they do need to remember that and, and never cut the island too close. And, um, it's there's some pretty uh pretty hairy stuff out there in a few areas and and always look and make sure the bird is swimming versus standing uh <laughs> yeah. when you when you see them out there um that's mm-hmm. a that's also a, a lesson to live by but uh let's talk about it. how's minnesota been so far this summer well um i didn't fish much this last week um you know, and I actually, I was getting some pretty good reports around the Twin Cities here. Um, you know, nothing crazy, but just some, some, you know, a couple of decent outings from people. And 
Um, you know, and typically this is a time of year um, that I'm trying to be up north because usually the water's you know too warm to fish. I'd say nine out of ten seasons you're you're really not going to be able to fish um, you know any of the lakes around here. And right now I think it's kind of like I mean I don't I've been here anywhere from low to mid seventies for water temperature and fish biting bucktails and that type of thing. Um, uh, a week before I was up in Detroit Lakes um, in that area for a while and. And, um, you know, really since like right after the 4th of July, um, some cooler air moved in and it's, you know, other than just a couple of warm days here or there, it's been, it's been cooler overall. And that water was, um, I mean, we were going out in the mornings with, um, you know, some upper sixties even, you know, starting out, uh, for water temps and, and really, you know, we're trying to find some fish in open water. We were marking some, you know, I, I don't know if those fish just got worked over earlier in the year or whatever, but. The open water thing was a little slow and, and we just slid up to weeds and, um, you know, they weren't everywhere on weed edges, but you would find certain pockets where like, it's almost like, you know, packs of open water fish or something would slide up and, um, and yeah, we, we had some pretty good flurries and a couple of good, good days out there. So that's, uh, how, how has it been like in other parts of the state as far as like, have you talked to anybody up on leech or anything like that? Well, yeah, I know. Um, so this is going bad. I, I haven't been on leech yet. Um, I'll be up there a bit in August, but, um, you know, and, and I don't know some of the, some, some, it's a big lake and there's a lot of people fishing. I talked to, um, a couple of guys and they had talked to a few and it sounded like, you know, as of a, like a week ago, it was pretty slow. It didn't sound like a lot of fish had slid up on the structure just yet. And, um, and yeah, it didn't sound real great. Um, I got kind of a, and this is a, this is going back again, like a week or two. Um, kind of got another slow report from Vermilion, but you know, again, big lake, a lot of people fishing. There could have been somebody on the other side of the lake catching, catching big ones. But, um, yeah, I mean, nothing, you know, kind of just what guys I'm talking to, it's like, it's a fish here, a fish there. And, and um, a lot of bucktail fish, though. Um, I think just, you know, the cooler weather and the water temps kind of staying, you know, somewhat regulated. I think there's a lot of fish up high in the water and, and by weed edges and, and chasing down bucktails. So That's good. What? Um, well, let's talk about that. I mean, you know, the, the bucktail stuff, what are you hearing about as far as um, uh, big blades, smaller blades? What, uh, what kind yeah, of stuff you know, there? It's funny because I'm hearing a lot more about smaller blades uh, being pretty effective. And, you know, for me, I'll typically start throwing those a little bit later in the year um, when the fish are, are, you know, really up top on on, on the tops of spots and, um, you know, more in sand and rock and that type of thing, um, you know, and real shallow. But um, so, you know, we've been throwing we've been throwing a lot of the musky frenzy stuff, the IC9s and IC10s. Um, you know, the IC9 is kind of a perfect, um, you know, mid-sized bucktail, like a cowgirl junior. Um, and that one's, that one's been, been producing a lot for us. And then, um, I don't know, there's something that IC10, um, that's been a really good bait the last two years. And, um, we, we've been picking up a few fish on those too. Sometimes I just got so many bucktails laying on the deck and we're switching and, and I don't even know what, <laughs> what we're throwing half the time. You know, you get into a blade bite and, and a lot of times you just start. Um, start start chucking yeah yeah sometimes guys are switching up on the front deck and um but yeah it's 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 been you know i guess maybe i'm getting older i guess you know a a 10 didn't necessarily used to be a big bucktail back in the day but to me that's a pretty big bucktail i don't throw i don't (laughs) throw much bigger than that anymore so yeah i mean so i mean let's talk about that i mean you're coming up here to the woods i mean and you're looking for uh you know a, a probably you know you said you were hoping for a good bucktail bite up here what is um you know like like when you were fishing up here and and like i said you're leaving tomorrow so you're anticipating um what are you kind of what's going to be your game plan coming up this way well you know i so i've been hearing a lot about um like the eight nines from musky frenzy working real good up there so we'll definitely be throwing some of those um, you know, it, well, it's usually a pretty good mix. You know, one thing we've done really, really well on, um, are the Kramer brothers baits up there, the, especially the tickers, the Revo tickers. 
Um, and those baits, you know, especially like if those fish get real chasey and, and real aggressive on the rocks, um, you know, that bait is, it's one that's always going to be spinning. It's always going to be making noise and you can kind of like rip it and get real aggressive with, um, you know, direction changes, speed changes, just because you don't have to worry about those blades ever collapsing or slipping or anything. Um, so that's one that a lot of times we may leave the boat with that. Um, and uh, and also, too, like in the evenings, um, the wood tick, you know, it's the same, that Revo ticker with a, a wood body, and you can fish that one slow and right under the surface. I mean, it's it's arguably a topwater bait, right? I mean, you can just bulge it right under the surface. Um, and that one's been good too. Um, actually really that was a prototype. Um, the last time I was up on woods, <laughs> that was, I had one crude prototype of that bait and, um, uh, and caught a couple of fish on that. So I'm excited to get up there with some, some real ones now, but, um, yeah, I mean, we'll just have to see. I mean, um, you know, it's always important up there if, you know, in my experience, you know, whatever you're leading the boat with, you know, you want a good hooking bait a good you know kind of a you know aggressive bucktail it's going to get their their attention and then you maybe want to follow it up with you know depending on the conditions like you know if it's if it's calm and midday you know i i like to throw like a minnow bait or something grind it into the rocks um and i know you were saying you know <laughs> pre uh podcast call you were mentioning how you guys were seeing some in, in weeds more and you were saying like minnow baits and suets and stuff like that so i mean i think just having complementary baits um, up there is really, really important, but sure. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, l- let's talk about those revos though, because that actually is a, you know, for, for guys that don't know, that's a bait that has a, it's a solid blade on the front, more of like a, a propeller, um, exactly. uh, on the front that's bent and it does, it's, it's an always spinning, uh, uh, blade. But the one thing I've noticed with those baits is you don't get quite as much lift and do you, you know, maybe talk about that a little bit? What is, you know, as far as that bait go, do you have to, you have to work that bait a little bit faster, don't you? Yeah. So it's, it's really, um, well, basically like wherever that bait starts being retrieved in the water column, that's pretty much where it's going to, going to stay. Um, speed in the retrieve won't lift it up like it will with regular blades, like cupped blades. Um, you know, speed will, will bring those, uh, a regular bladed bucktail up in the water. A Revo will just kind of like the faster you go, it'll almost just like knuckleball, but it really won't start coming up until the line angle changes as it gets close to the boat and it starts naturally being brought up. So the biggest thing is when you cast it, it needs to be started, you know, right as it hits the water, essentially. Um, you can't let it sink mm-hmm. down too far. You're going to be hung up in the rocks. Yeah. Um, I think I hear, did Brody just wake up there? They just woke up. I kicked um, <laughs> a box, and my alarm system went off. Brody. Uh, oh, boy. You, that was a bear. Brody. Uh, high alert. Brody, you want to go bear hunting? Nope. <laughs> That's what I tell <laughs> them when I, go to, when I go to take them out to use the bathroom. I go, come on, let's go bear hunting. And then they, <laughs> they, they do not find any bears. Yeah, unsuccessful, huh? <laughs> They're unsuccessful hunters here. <laughs> and Brody's falling asleep standing up. Um, but, uh, continue. Well, so with the Revos, yes. So it, it kind of, you know, good mechanics when that bait lands, um, trying to get it started, you know, right away or pretty much right away, keep that bait higher. Um, you know, you can put a little bend in the wire that helps kind of keep them up. Um, the other thing, like the, the number seven, so the smallest blade size, um, Mike Kramer has, you know, he's been doing like these mag seven where it's, uh, it's a little bit longer, but it's double skirted. <laughs> Bro- Brody, Brody, do you, Brody do you likes have a, the double seven. Do you have the, do you like the double seven? Sure. <laughs> uh, but, you know, adding that skirt kind of gives the bait maybe a little more lift or a, a slower sink, so it's not going to get down as much. But um, it is, it's a, it takes a little bit of, uh, of skill um, to work them. But, man, they, they really are effective when those fish are, are chasing around on the rocks up there. Um, and then of course the wood tick, like I said, that with the wood body, you know, that, that'll stay up high. I mean, that's one that, you know, anybody can fish. You can just reel it in right underneath the surface and, and, you know, that'll keep you out of trouble as far as getting snagged up and stuff. Sure. Well, hold on. Brody turned me down. Oh, that's better. 
Um, Brody, you're a terrible engineer. You're not good at engineering podcasts. Here, come over here. Come over here. Or just stand there and look at me. Brody. Brody. Okay, I'll just pet you. Um, the other thing is, is that with the bucktails and stuff up here, um, what about, you know, like, what about color? I mean, are, are you a big color guy? Do you change a lot of colors or, uh, or how do you look at that? Um, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I, I claim to not be as much of a color guy, I think, as a lot of people, but, um, you know, and it all depends, you know, once, if you, if you're on a strong bucktail bite, um, I feel like, you know, obviously you're going to have a bigger, bigger sample size of fish. Usually a color starts, you know, kind of rearing its head as, as a front leader or a front runner as far as what the fish want. Um, you know, up there, I've really liked golds, you know, like, uh, Kramer has the, the iced whiskey color, which has been really good. It's kind of a, a gold copper blend in the skirt and then a gold blade. Um, you know, also he, well, he's also got a color called laser, which is kind of a, it's kind of that like oil slick looking, uh, uh, black kind of an, more of like an iridescent black flash of skirt, um, with a nickel blade. That's been good. Um, you know, I know a lot of guys really like, like the green, like the Martian green or Christmas bulb green blades. Um, I haven't used those as much. I actually have some ready to go, um, you know, in the, the musky frenzies with that color. Um, I know that's a popular one up there, but, um, you know, I've, I've also done well on, on some real bright gaudy looking colors up there as well. Um, you know, whites and stuff like that, stuff that just. I think if it's like bright and, um, you know, a lot of times just something that like sticks out real good, just even to your eye in the water up there is, is, uh, that's been good for us as well. I call those dick and a cake colors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. That just stands out. Cause you would, you would definitely notice that if you were eating cake. Um, yes. uh, you would so, hope so. Yes. <laughs> if not, you, <laughs> you have really bad depth perception. Um, <laughs> right. that would, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's been a, you know, that, that's kind of the same thing that we're seeing, uh, over here and, um, with the bucktail. But now I will say when the water was, uh, we were dealing with that, a lot of that colder stuff. It did seem like there wasn't as much bucktail stuff going on, um, as there was, you know, more jerk bait and stop and go, uh, stuff. But I think we're definitely going to get into that here really, um, really hardcore um and then the top water i mean i the 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 little fat bastard um has definitely been uh going here this week uh which is nice and have you heard much of a top water bite going on in minnesota or or, or anything um so yeah i mean not not much of one it's it the <laughs> The reports that I've been getting in Minnesota have been, most of what I've heard has been very, like, isolated. Like, if somebody did well one day, like, they couldn't duplicate it the next. I know, like, Brad Hoppy, I know, was out um, in the Detroit Lakes area, I think, uh, a couple weeks ago. And they had, like, a, a three-fish topwater night. And then I think, like, you know, tried to relive the magic and, and you know, and then it sounded like it wasn't happening. So, and that's, you know that's kind of how it's been for me a little bit too. Like whatever's working the day before you got to mix it up. If they're biting bucktails one day, um, you know, you better throw rubber the next or something. But, um, yeah, I, I had, I talked to a, a buddy, um, who was up the other week up on, on woods and they, he said, I think towards the tail end of his week, um, you know, the top water bite started to kind of pick up. So I, I love hearing that cause, uh, this guy can throw top water all day if I need to. So <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, I like it, <laughs> uh, especially in the in the back of the boat. It's a lot easier to reel in. You can also reel it in from a seated position. Ooh, uh, are you already? Are you all? Are you going full old guy and <laughs> sitting down and fishing? <laughs> no, well they make ten foot rods for a reason. Um, <laughs> so no, it's. Uh, I know, but I'm just practicing for my uh, my later years. Um, <laughs> you just just getting the mechanics down. Yeah, I, I want to make sure I don't want to I don't want to be caught by surprise. Uh, 
you do like the big like throw your whole body backwards and set straight up in the air like Bill Dance. Are you, are you gonna go with the Bill Dance hook set? Uh, like feet up in the air, like I, off the ground. I want, yeah, but I have to have one of those crooked uh, seat poles, like he sets on, uh, <laughs> the one that like goes up and it takes a right I angle. Can't ima- I can't imagine that uh, that your seat pole isn't crooked already, right after <laughs> the uh, island mishap. <laughs> the uh, that it wasn't a big island, like I said, two acres tops. Yeah, uh, those are tough to see. Actually, they, they are. They blend in. With the surroundings, it's called Lake of the Woods, and it looked like the woods. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just so many islands out there. I mean, you're bound to hit one sooner or later. They jump out of every. I mean, they literally jump in front of me. It's uh, <laughs> it's really scary. It's really scary. Somebody should put a bell on them. Uh, <laughs> that way you don't. Uh, that way you don't run into them. But it was probably one of the more funniest things I've ever done uh, because I could not stop laughing. As I'm, you know, basically um, almost vertical uh, <laughs> in the boat. It was, uh, yeah, well, that's how I learned spots. Um, treating, the, treating the ranger like a resort rental tinner boat, aren't you? Exactly. Well, <laughs> hey, it's lived a good life. It's still got a lot of life left in it. That's why you got kill guards. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let's talk about with the bucktails um, for guys that are, you know, let's say fishing up north. Uh, maybe talk about what kind of what kind of reel and rods are you throwing those with? Uh, I know you like the Thorn Brothers rods and stuff too. Um, what are you What are you working your stuff with? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. The Thorn Brothers rods and the Stealth. Um, you know, started using the ten footers this year and. Um, I mean, I honestly, I can't say enough nice things. I mean, I've, the, I've been using the Predators forever. They're, it's a great rod. Um, you know, that X, X heavy Predator, you mentioned it earlier. I mean, super versatile, but, um, you know, there's something about going from like a nine and a half footer to up to a 10 footer. Um, it just, I mean, I feel like I'm like, you know, I don't have to lean into that figure eight as much. And you don't have to bend the knees. I mean, you it's really almost like it's, around. yeah, it's almost like it's six inches longer. Yeah, exactly. Six inches makes a big difference, right? Exactly. Uh, I've heard that. <laughs> um. But uh, no, it, it, it that's been that's been kind of a treat to fish with this year. Um, you know, the heavy is really nice. I can just launch, um, you know, kind of midsize and smaller bucktails out with that that uh, that heavy, and then the X heavy is good for the the bigger, the, you know, the the tens and up. Um, you know, you're not loading up as much in the figure eight then, but um, you know, I, I like, I still, I'm, I'm using a little bit of a mix now. I can say this because I have one Daiwa, um, but I, I pretty much go with the Shimano Trinks, um, the 400s and the five, you know, a couple 500s, but, um, usually go with the, uh, the high speed, uh, 400 has been a good reel for us. Um, you know, I don't know what it is, but I, you know, sometimes I, we've been, I've been getting guys in the boat that are fishing good they're i mean they're burning and it doesn't it hasn't seemed like um aside from like pre fourth of july we had kind of a warmer spell of weather and we had some good fishing here in the metro bucktail fishing where they really wanted the the bucktail gassed Mm -hmm. but um it's been more of like kind of just a medium retrieve um that they've been been locking in on um you know, as of late. So I don't know that probably that cooler weather has something to do with that, but, um, still like the high speed reel though, even if I'm not, um, really goosing that thing in just because, you know, if they're, if they're going to bite out on the cast, you know, you really, it's nice to be able to pick up line quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and just, just to keep them pinned. Um, so I, yeah, definitely like a, a higher speed reel when it comes to bucktail fishing. What about, so, are you on the 500s? Are they? Do you have those in the high speed or the PGs? Both. Um, I, I actually kind of like. So I, usually, if I'm really burning, I'm I'm going to use uh, the 400. There's just something about like I don't know, just having that smaller reel in the hand and everything. I like the Power Gear. You know, it's still it's got that gigantic spool, so it still picks up like 30 inches of line for a crank. So a lot of times, like the bigger blades kind of that medium retrieve 
speed that's that's usually where i i end up um, picking up a 500 is is um with bigger blades and and a lot of times too like at like at night or like evening or night when you're slowing down just a little bit too Mm -hmm. all right well that's uh that's what i was wondering there so what about now let me ask you this because i've noticed one thing about me the last few years but as far as like leaders and stuff go i've actually kind of found myself going back to a lot of wire stuff uh and especially up here with all the rocks um, it seems like I, I really like the wire. Um, I still got some fluorocarbon that I use. Um, but the wire, uh, is something that I've been kind of, um, seeing myself go back to. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. There, and, and definitely, um, you know, that's not something that I've been leading the charge with. Um, you know, but yeah, so kind of, you know, hearing that other guys are using that, um, and then, you know, like even with, I think we were talking about it on an earlier podcast, you know, guys trolling with, um, you know, with wire line and stuff. Like I, I decided to cheat this year and, and had Stealth Tackle make some, uh, some four foot steel trolling leaders for me. And, and it's just been an awful trolling year for me. So I, I can't say they've been working. <laughs> so, any you're better, bla- so you're blaming those. I definitely blaming John from Stealth. Yeah. <laughs> he, he twisted them up wrong or something. I don't know what he, he went did. left instead of right. I understand. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, no, I, I mean, I, especially around those rocks with like the minnow baits and that kind of thing, definitely like to have steel, always use steel, you know, any kind of contact bait like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, with the bucktails, I mean, I've, you know, in, in the past, I've usually gone fluorocarbon still on, on woods, but, um, you know, definitely will, you know, have a bunch of solid steel and, and, um, you know, may try that up there a little bit you know sometimes you get a little different vibration or something um so yeah we'll we'll see i might mix it up I, that that has been on my mind um as i've been kind of packing some stuff up here getting ready for the trip well what about you know you talked about minnow baits and stuff and you're grinding them into the rocks um last week's podcast i had joe cooper on uh guide mm-hmm. up here and, and he he loves um, his bait is, you know, is, you know, uh, that he's done really well with up here is just the standard old, uh, super shad wrap and, oh, sure. and digging those into the rocks and, and everything. And I didn't talk with him on that, but, uh, about the leader, uh, but I would, ass- but for me, that's one of the reasons why I went to steel is, is for baits like that. Cause the leaders, you know, getting into the rocks, hitting into the rocks and, and it getting wore out. Have you noticed a difference, you know, steel versus mono doing that or fluorocarbon? Yeah. I mean, if you, if you put a floral leader on and you're, cause yeah, same thing. I mean, when I, when I'm using a minnow bait, a lot of times I'm using a, just a storm flat stick. Um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty loud, you know, bait that you can, you can bang off those rocks pretty good. And if you use floral, you will, you know, if you use it for a couple hours, um, and you run your fingers up and down that floor, it's going to feel very, <laughs> I mean, you're going to tell it's going to have some, it's going to feel like the, the bottom of your ranger after you hit an Island. Oh, um, so like so. a baby's bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, if you have a key, you got to put a keel guard on it. I think. Exactly. And my keel guards already got a hunk out of it from ice. I was busting, uh, a few years ago. So mine's just not smooth yeah yeah don't look don't look underneath that's yeah exactly yeah, don't look under the, the hood mm-hmm. um well that's one thing i was wondering about and, and it's something that you know i i've really i had john make me up some 12 inch uh regular steel leaders and i've been running those and gradually changing out my fluoros to those um up here and I, I really, I feel more comfortable when I'm fishing around the rocks and stuff, um, doing more rock stuff with those just because of the, um, you know, if I got a bait that's making contact, I just do not, uh, want to have the situation where the leader comes back broken or, or, yeah. or scarred up or, 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 dev, you know, get a nice fish on and all of a sudden, um, I have half a leader left. So, right. No, it's not something to take a chance with. And I don't know. I think, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. I feel like we had a conversation on, on the podcast earlier about, um, about trolling. And, and uh, again, I'm not an expert troller. I mean, you've caught a zillion fish trolling. I'm sure you can speak way more, um, 
intelligently on this than I can, but I, I know like in the past, you know, kind of the, you know, one line per angler Minnesota spread, I'll just throw two, you know, two bigger crankbaits out on, on board behind boards and usually on like a four foot um, floral leader. Mm-hmm. And then on the down rod, I'll just throw it back, you know, whatever kind of towards the end of the prop wash. And, uh, a lot of times I'll throw a little smaller crankbait or something or something that will run around and I'll throw it on a wire leader. And um, just in talking to other guys, you know, a lot of guys will be like, oh, they never bite down right on this lake or that lake or, you know, it doesn't matter what you put on the down rod, it won't get bit. And I always felt like the percentage of fish in my boat that were biting that down rod um, was was pretty decent. And I so in the back of my head, I'm like, I don't maybe it's got something to do with that wire. You know, and if you think about it, like that solid wire getting thrown around, you know, by a lip that's swimming like that and like kind of getting thrown back and forth through the water, it's going to make a lot more noise, I think, cutting or a different noise anyways, cutting through that water than, than that floral does. So, Well, my biggest fish always come on the down rod. Um, right. They always have. I mean, in Pelican, my biggest fish out there trolling was a 53, and it was on the down rod. Um, so... Nice. I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, I've always, I'm a big believer in the down rod. I'm a big believer in the wire. And it, uh, yeah, I know a lot of guys there are are super, you know, into board stuff. And I get it, you know. I mean, it does catch a lot of fish. So, but I think a down rod's really important. I think the wire is is really important in both uh, in line and, and leader material. So, no, I, I, I totally, uh, I totally get that. What, uh, you know, f- for up here, you were talking speeds and stuff, uh, of the, of the reels and the rods. Um, you know, the one thing I see people up here struggle with, um, especially in my boat is, you know, getting tired and everything. Um, what's the, you know, I, what's a way to kind of beat fatigue, um, that you've come up with on the, you know, on the bucktails, you know, for me, I always tell guys, you know, point straight at it. Um, don't put your rod down, point straight at the bucktail. And as it gets closer to the boat, lower your rod, um, to kind of help them with the, the hand fatigue and everything. Um, any, any, you know, words of wisdom there? Um, I would say monster energy drinks probably oh, are the, the yes. best. <laughs> no. And toilet um, paper for the islands. <laughs> right. No, I mean, I just... Some of the stuff you just touched on, I, in in just in general, I would say mechanics are probably the, you know, the biggest thing. Uh, you know, sometimes you'll see guys. Um, I would say like with the butt end of the rod, you know, with with, um, you know, like say the ten foot stealth that I've been throwing bucktails on this year. Um, you know, it's a ten foot rod. You got plenty of rod there. Get a nice substantial butt end. You know, you can you can with of course with the Thorn Brothers Customs, you can choose how long that butt end is, I would say 18 inches is probably a good um, length on a rod that size for a bucktail. Um, you know, you can then tuck that butt end under your armpit. I call it like the chicken wing, kind of like your elbow armpit, and really lock it in, um, you know, to your body. If you are kind of holding that, that butt end and just like letting it run wild and letting it run loose, you know, I'll see some guys where it's kind of like against their forearm and their elbow, but it's not tight against their body. Yeah. Well, now you're now you're trying to do a lot with that that wrist. You know, like for me, it's, I reel with my right hand. So you know, your left left wrist, left forearm. I mean, that's just going to wear you out in a hurry if you get that locked into your body. And then, too, when you get bit out on the cast um, for your hook set, if it's against your body, you really just you can kind of just like pivot your your torso, pivot your upper body over to the side, mm-hmm. you know, and keep that rod low, and you're going to have instant hookup. Um, if that if it's not tight against your body, now you have to like basically, you know, it's all in your hand, and then eventually the butt end is going to kind of hit your body, and you're going to I don't know, it just looks awkward, and I, I see people struggle with that. So, um, well, yeah, what's the <clears throat> sound mechanics? Okay, so what? It, let me ask you this, because this is something I've I've changed over the last few years: um, the split grip rod versus the full cork. I love a full cork because my side will get bruised as hell with a uh, with a split grip. Um, what about you? Yeah, full cork. Um, you know, again, I've been been using the the Thorn Brothers stuff for I think ten years now, um, and and um, 
you know, pretty much their, their, I think it's, they call it a small flare or whatever on the, on the butt end. Um, but it just, it, it's a full cork butt end and it seems to rest nicely. Uh, you know, every, every year when I start fishing, you know, you kind of almost have to like callus up your, your ribs or your armpit there a little bit and, and get used to it. Um, but you know, it, it nestles in there nicely, um, versus, yeah, like, a you know, a, this, just the skinny rod blank of a, of a split grip or kind of that knobby part, you know, I've seen guys that have even taken like a, you know, like a tennis racket grip or something and like filled in that, that split grip just so it, it feels a little, a little more friendly in on the rib cage. So, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's definite. I, uh, that, yeah, I used to take, uh, when we were jigging at uh, cave run and I had a bunch of split grips as we'd take a pool noodle and uh <laughs> wrap around it uh duct tape yeah. it on there that way you got some um you know to keep your armpit from basically going raw uh um, yeah then when you go to the sandbar you can sit on it you can sit on it Whoa. you can you can have fun it's 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 you know it, it's it's all that fun in a box uh <laughs> is what it is so well, cool deal, man. Well, hey, I'm glad you came on here with us. Um, before we get out of here, I can't talk. We've been talking about bucktails. I cannot uh, not talk about Muskie Mayhem Tackle. Guys, check them out, muskiemayhemtackle.com, makers of the original cowgirl, um, you know, junior cowgirl. I can't go through all the baits that they make. You know, the new one this year was uh, one of their newer baits is the Grenade. If you're looking at fishing a little bit deeper, weight forward bucktail, two blades out the back. Um, definitely something to look out. Check them out at muskymayhemtackle.com. We've also got some for Muskie Hunter. We've got a, a collection of four custom junior cowgirls. Um, I think we got them in Southern Shad. We've got them in uh, Copper Perch, Copper Fire, and Orange Fire. Available on the website at muskyhunter.com. Ryan, do you got anything you want to plug or uh, anybody you want to yell at? Mm, no, I, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. I, I might, I might need to yell at somebody by the end of the year. So I'll get on, get oh. on your soapbox at some point. But oh, I can, no. I can do that. How can somebody get a hold of you if they want to go fishing with you? Uh, best thing, just, just shoot me a text and give me a call is, is always the best thing. Uh, 651-206-8767. Um, or you can check out my website and get a hold of me through that, too. It's TwinCitiesMuskie.com. All right. And, guys, if you ever want to come up here to Lake of the Woods or Fall Fish in Minnesota, um, you can always get a hold of me as well. Um, the best way to get a hold of me is to uh, smoke signals. Um, that is something. Normally it's my boat or something's on fire. That's how I know how to read them. But uh, if not and you have a, a newfangled telephone, you can always text me at 606-776-6729. Guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for um, all the uh, encouraging words like go to hell and you're terrible. Um, and, uh, and yeah, Ryan, hey, good luck at Lake of the Woods. I'll be shooting you a text. I'll be curious to see how it is over there uh, in your area. You're uh, about an hour and 15 away from me, so... Um, be curious about that. And then, uh, and yeah, and you, are you still coming up with your daughter in August here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be, uh, yeah, kind of beginning August. We're, uh, coming over to your side there and yeah, we'll see, uh, see what's happening then. Well, um, tell your daughter to be ready for two very active bull, well, one well, very active bulldog. That's the only way I got her to agree to, uh, come and fish with dad. So <laughs> is, is, is the dogs. <laughs> Yeah, there's two bulldogs, and yeah, you're gonna love them. She, I don't even think she knows we're going fishing. She, she just thinks it's like a a dog trip or something. It's just, so. it's just you get to pet uh, dogs. One uh, river is um, river will sit on your head. Uh, <laughs> I've experienced that twice this morning in bed, and uh, Brody will just Brody will be just Brody. He'll uh, Brody does Brody things. Yeah, Brody does Brody things. He'll contemplate the world's problems. And fart behind you, and you'll want to throw up. Uh, He'll fart and blame it on you? Exactly. Yeah, you'll look around, and his paw is just up in the air pointing. Um, (laughs) That was you, Dad. Why'd you do that? Um, 
That's a that's a Brody thing. So, all right, bud. Well, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on here today, and uh, and uh, yeah. So I will sure. uh, I will talk to you later. All right, thanks for having me on, Greg. Yep.